Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Aman. I am from Cisco's routing protocols team and we are coming up with a series of videos that would be explaining what is PFR and how can we uh, configure, install and play with the different features available inside the technology to have maximum WAN optimization. All right, let's get started. Okay, so PFR, which is also known as IWAN. Why do we actually require it? The legacy routing we have with the legacy protocols like EIGRP, VGP, that is incapable of taking any decision is based on any dynamic variable that keeps on changing on the ISP links. For example, it could be jitter, it could be delay, it could be load on the link, etc. So to come up uh, with a solution to these parameters and to dynamically change the routing across two ISP links, Cisco has come up with this technology known as IWIN or PFR version 3. Now, the, the benefits that PFR brings to us are increased WAN capacity, improved application performance, and uh, provides a cost effectiveness as well. Right. Going on to the next slide. Okay, so what are the main components in PFR version 3? The main components are hub master controller, we would be seeing it in a diagram later on as well in upcoming slides. Hub Master Controller is the most critical decision maker device in the entire PFR uh, setup. This is the node that is responsible to send smart probes, take decisions on what policy to choose and to push this policy across to other spoke sites that are part of the PFR setup. Coming on to Hub Border Routers. These are, the, uh, these are the border routers that are located at the hub site and these are PFR enabled. You can configure more than one WAN interfaces on these routers and we generally have two or more border routers as well. Generally you will see two but we can have more than two as well. Likewise we have a master controller that is located at branch site and just like we have in hub site, we have a border router at branch site as well. So it is the responsibility of the master at the hub site to push policies across to the master at the spoke site. Now you'll be able to correlate these routers and the components in this diagram. So here if you see at the central site, this is our main site that is taking all the policy changing decisions. We have a master controller and we have two border routers. Likewise, we have two links that are there. One is MPLS, one is internet. These are just nomenclatures used by us. You can use anything. Now, get, let us get started with uh, the configuration, how to configure PFR and, and, and get it running in a real environment. All right, so the configuration would be based on this topology the main devices we would be focusing on would be R3, which is our hub site and its master controller. R4 and R5 here are the border routers of the hub site. So in all collection of R3, R4 and R5 routers, it is our hub site or centralized site as you saw in the previous slide. Now, we would be having a spoke site R9 here. So just for the simplicity, we would not be uh, entertaining uh, have a spoke site R10. We would be focusing on R9 only. All right, let us talk about PFR version 3 configuration that needs to be there. The first configuration is on hub master as it is shown here. Now it requires you to configure a domain, domain being the keyword, one is the name of the domain that can be specified as per user preference. PFR v3 is VRF aware. However, here we are only dealing with the global configuration, hence VRF default. Master hub defines that this router is the master at the hub site. Source interface loopback zero is just like assigning a router ID to PFR technology. Here we define the policy class being a keyword test is the name of the policy and we define all the traffic that carries DSCP value of EF to be matched against a custom policy present whose name is voice. 
you can also come up with a user defined policy and can define parameters as well. We would be showing this in uh, upcoming slides. So the traffic that is matched with the SCP EF, its preferred path is defined to be INET1 and fallback as INET2. What are INET1 and INET2? INET1 and 2 are mainly two ISP links that are terminating on two border routers in our case. Okay, we'll, I will show you live demonstration of this, uh, where this, these are configured when we come in the later slides. Hub border, what do we need to configure on hub here? If you see, we have simply defined domain one once again, the configuration remains same. The third command border mentions that this is the border router. And we assign a router ID by this command and we tell hub border router that who is your master master being 10333 which is nothing but the loopback zero address of hub master so this hub master has loopback address of 10333 so border needs to be aware of that this last command here domain one path inet this goes under the uh, dmvpn tunnel that is uh, terminating on this router we would again be showing this in the upcoming live demonstration now in our case, R9 serves dual functionality. It acts as a border as well as uh, a master controller at the uh, spoke site. Now, we again define a domain whose name is 1. We define this router to be border. We tell this router that who is, that what is your router ID. This command here, source interface loopback 0, defines the router ID. We tell this border router that master is this local router therefore this part is there when we have one router acting as master as well as border apart from this we need to have a configuration that tells this master or uh, border at the spoke site that what is the centralized master controller so this these last three commands here tell what is the centralized master controller present at the uh, centralized site or hub site once you have configured all these configurations, the PFR control plane should come up. You should have a basic PFR setup and traffic should be routed as per the defined policy. Now, there are certain ways in which we can check if our configuration has gone good and if the control plane has converged and is functioning as expected. So these are the checks we need to perform in order to make sure that our PFR configuration is correct and we are uh, good with the PFR setup and control plane. First of all, check if the TCP session between master and border at each site is there and is stable. Secondly, check if there is EIGRP SAF neighborship between master hub, border hub, and master spoke. Thirdly, check if uh, the configurational and operational status of the domain master is up. Check if spoke master is able to automatically learn exit interfaces. Note, we do not define the exit interfaces at spoke. And if your configuration is correct, these should be discovered automatically. Check if spoke master is able to receive the policy that has been pushed from hub master. Finally, check the destination prefix or the actual traffic if the state of the traffic is controlled or not. We'll go one by one in the coming slides, starting with the TCP session. Let me walk you through with the configuration we have on the devices for PFR. R3 is our master hub controller, and this is the configuration we have for the master hub. We define it as a master hub, and we define the policy as discussed earlier in the slides. After that, we go to R4 to verify the configuration. We see that uh, it has been defined as a border and it has been configured with the loopback address of the master to tell it that who is the master for this border route. Also we, also we check the DMVP internal on this router. We have DMVP internal 100 and this DMVP internal has been assigned with a name internet1. Likewise, we have router R5 having similar sort of configuration as 
R4 has and it also has a DMVP internal 200. Now these tunnels which are tunnel 100 on R4 and tunnel 200 on R5 these are also terminating on the spoke site R9. So if I take you here on R9 this is the configuration first I'll walk you through it that it, it has been it is a border router also it is a master local and it has been configured with information that who is the master hub now it has two tunnels 100 that has been conf uh, this is the tunnel 100 and also we have tunnel 200 okay so this is pretty much the configuration we have for v uh, P pfr now let me uh, show you the checks we discussed earlier on R3, we will verify for the TCP session establishment. So we see that we have two sessions established with both the local border routers. If I go to R4, it will have one session with the local master. There you go. So this should be our first check and look for this established status of TCP. After having verified this, we check on R3 for the EIGRP SAF adjacency. So we check that we have SAF adjacency with both our local border routers as well as spoke master, which is configured here. R4 should also show us this information here. Here is the SAF adjacency on port route. SAF adjacency is used to push policies from the master hub to the spoke sites. Also, we check uh, EIGRP SAF adjacency on R9, which is our master spoke. We see that it has a successfully established EIGRP adjacency over service address family with master hub. After verifying EIGRP service address family, we check if the master hub has correct operational status and configured status. To do so, we run this command and we look for this output. We check if operational status is up, configured status is up, and if borders are clearly listed here along with their tunnels. So if you see here, the border, R4, the border router R4 is listed here. And along with that, it has a tunnel 100 listed here. And the same goes for border router R5. After this, we check if the spoke is able to successfully find its exit interfaces. The command to do so is so the next check we do is on the spoke, and we see if spoke is able to find its exit interfaces or not. So if you see here on R9, which is spoke master, it has the exit tunnel 100 and exit tunnel 200 successfully discovered. Having done all these checks, we check on the spoke if it has learned the policy that was pushed from uh, the master hub. The command to do so is See, there is nowhere this policy is locally configured on this box. It has been pushed from the master hub. So if you want to cross verify, we go here on R3 and we look for the same command. See, this policy is exactly the replica what we see here on R9. If all the above checks discussed hold true, we need to go to router R3 and we need to check if the traffic, application traffic is being handled by PFR in controlled manner or not. So run this command show domain one master traffic class, check the DSCP is EF which is what we defined, present status controlled which is what we actually want to see, the traffic is in compliance with the policy we configured, the current service provider is internet one which is what we configured. So. This shows that the PFR has been successfully configured. The control plane is also 
up and running fine and the traffic is getting uh, PFR handled. Thank you for viewing this video and we hope this was informative. Have a good day.